by taking a little bit of time and going around the house and finding out what your phantom loads are, you can quickly and easily chop down your electricity bill. The way that I chopped down my electricity bill was by using sense and using the live load metering. This was a quick and easy way for me to see what was using power when. Now, contrary to uh, the time right now or what you might think, the best time to do this is actually at night or in the evening when everything is kind of off inside your house. And the reason for this is uh, twofold. It's easy to spot what's happening. Um, everything's got an LED and they're freaking bright. So once you find a phantom load, they're pretty easy to identify. And the other reason is most of your stuff is not running like dishwashers, uh, washing machines, etc. So it's a good time to find out what your actual phantom loads are. Now you're gonna need either a Sense Energy Monitor or alternatively, you can use a multimeter and just clamp on uh, this to the live load inside the panel box. Now, if you don't know what you're doing in there, uh, word of caution, anytime you take the cover off the panel box, you probably should know what you're doing. That's a lot of current in there. There's the disclaimer, so at your own risk. So to start out, I turn off absolutely everything I have in the house. Everything should just be on standby power. That is important. Once you've got that done, take all the breakers and kill every breaker that you have in the house. So everything should be off. Then you start with uh, one at a time, turn one breaker on and use either your multimeter or your sense and see what the load is. If the load doesn't change, fine, you can continue. If the load does change, you'll wanna walk around the house and find out where that phantom load is. Once you find a phantom load, it's pretty easy to determine how to kill that phantom load. Either unplug the device when it's not in use or find a smart plug that you can add on to turn off the power when you're not using the whatever device it is. A couple of my guilty culprits that I found was uh, my home theater had some pretty large phantom loads that I ended up uh, just putting a smart plug on so when I'm not using it or when there's no motion in the house, it just automatically shuts off. A couple of the other ones that I've found that uh, kind of surprised me are a toaster had a pretty large phantom load, it was like 24 watts. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but even a couple of watts, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, it adds up in a hurry and it can really start to affect your power bill. That to me doesn't make any sense why uh, we're making appliances that are just leaching power. Now there's gonna be some loads that you're gonna find that are acceptable loads. And uh, for me, definitely one of those was the uh, aquarium that you see behind me there. The heaters have to stay on in there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Same with the pumps and the filtration. So that's gotta stay on. Additionally, I've also got a uh, data storage for these fine videos when I'm working on them for you guys. They will sit on my NAS and that NAS uses power. My computer system also has a standby power, but it's low and those are to me, it's acceptable. I also use my computer as a media server. So I kind of want that stuff available when I want to use it. It does go into a standby power mode, but it still does use a little bit of power. So those for me are acceptable and I'm okay with using electricity there. Stuff that's not acceptable for me is a toaster and uh, a home theater that's off. I'm not sure why that was using as much power as it was, but it definitely was. This didn't take me a whole ton of time to uh, complete this whole process. Me and the kid uh, ran around the house looking for LEDs when we found a guilty culprit load. We would eliminate that load by either putting on a smart switch or whatever, as mentioned earlier. Now for you Canadians out there, some of the high power devices that really need timers or uh, something to control them are things like your block heater. In the winter time, I've got one here that's using 446 watts of power. So I only want that block heater to function when I need my car to start or I need the wife's car to start, whichever one is parked outside. So this is set on a timer for our schedule. It automatically comes on with enough time to heat the block so that we can continue on without just sitting there uh, trying to heat the outside <laughs> of this brutally cold province. Quick and easy changes, it'll save you a bunch of bunch of cash. For me, you can see the before and after here. I eliminated 100 watts of always on power and 100 watts or 110, something like that is what I ended up uh, chopping out of my bill. 
100 watts at 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. That's a good chunk of change. So I'm pretty sure it's uh, repeatable for other people as well. So I thought I would take the time to share what I ended up doing. So best of luck for you in chopping out your bills. Till next time.